Eccoci qua, buonasera a tutti, benvenuti, benvenuti a studenti nuovi e vecchi. Come state? How is everybody? So this being a live stream, I have to do a couple of round checks to make sure that everything is fine. But today we have an exciting, exciting uh, masterclass, I would say, with a Q&A uh, mixed in. And I'm going to help beginners especially, but anybody who's interested in learning Italian and you've been at it for a while. So, if you can all hear me, I'll keep an eye on the comments, but if you can all hear me, then I'll get started now. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Italian, as you can hear. Um, my name is Manu Venditti, Emanuele Venditti, and I run this little, fantastic company called Italy Made Easy, and we've been helping learners of Italian get really good at Italian over a long period of time and um, and we love doing it. We love helping anybody who's interested in our culture because I mean that's pretty awesome. Italy is such a tiny country and you want to learn it so we, we're here to help. Now who am I to give you advice? Well first of all um, I'm a linguist. I've been le learning Italian, not Italian, languages for a long time and I've been sharing my knowledge uh, for a long time. I taught Italian at the university for 10 years. I've been doing this for five or six and we have thousands of really happy students who have managed to learn Italian. But here's the thing, if you're approaching this new language, maybe it's your first time learning a second language, there is so much that could confuse you and that could make you not succeed and we don't want that. So if you are, if you are brand new, you're in luck because this is going to really save you a bunch of time. Actually, I may have some slides. There you go. <laughs> um, so if, is that right? How to learn Italian fast? Yes. So if you are starting now, then yeah, you'll save a lot of mistakes. But if you have already started, don't worry. Today we're going to see what, how, what we can fine tune the method that you're using so that you can get to be comfortable in Italian in the shortest period of time and we'll cover all aspects and um, and you'll get to ask your questions about how you're studying or you know your method I see um, Bella Juan, sono uno studente felice Terry says, uh, where is it? New students, you will be hard put to find a teacher more accomplished than Manu it's not about my comp ter ter Terry, grazie mille it's not even about my accomplishments, it's about your accomplishments that make me look accomplished. <laughs> Complimenti. So, but let's do it. Let's do it. And I, let me see how many of you are currently watching. 137 on YouTube and who knows how many on Facebook. And I do have access to your comments there if I ever want to share them, but I don't see why. So let me start with how, how can I guide you a bit more? This is a free lesson. It's going to be around probably 50 minutes an hour or so. It depends on how many questions you have. And my goal is for you to walk away of this lesson, of this live stream, with a better idea of how you can not waste your time learning Italian. So I just want to start and I will be, I won't be looking at your uh, comments too much because uh, I'll be teaching. Uh, so hold your questions to when I say, any questions? Avete domande? Avete domande? And then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll look at the comments and help you out. So we're going to cover around, I have a lot of notes here. I don't have slides per se. For me, it's more about the passion at which information comes out. So what are the general tips that I would have for you starting, learn, starting Italian or having studied Italian and maybe not feeling too accomplished with your efforts. So let's talk about the basic stuff. It's just the basic stuff. Ask yourself, and I would like to see your answers to this, but ask yourself, I might do this. So yeah, there you go. I can have both. Uh, ask yourself, how badly do you want to be able to communicate in Italian? If it's if you say, well, it'd be cool if I, if I knew how to do that, it doesn't mean you're not going to succeed. But for me, it's really important that 
you you know that learning a foreign language is a big endeavor it takes time and for me it's important that you want it badly so by again if you just want to go to italy and have a good one week vacation that's fine but knowing how badly you want it will determine everything else so let me know in the comments how badly do you want to be able to know italian like give me a percentage like you must uh let me see i saw a couple of good comments there so how badly do i want to speak italian 10 out of 10 i must do it cento per cento Pretty much, 100%. That is fantastic because once you know that you want it, then my next question for you is, and that's a tough one, I don't even have it on my slides, but I think it's, it's important for you to ask yourself, what do you want to achieve? Now, of course, you're going to say fluency. And so before I even look at the comments, if you want fluency, I would love for you to reframe what fluency means to all of us. Fluency doesn't mean knowing every word in the Italian language. It doesn't mean knowing grammar to perfection. It doesn't mean having an accent that sounds native. None of that means, means fluent. Fluent, it means that you can have a fluent, a flowing conversation with Italians. That includes if there's a word that you don't know, you are comfortable saying, sorry, what does, what does that mean? Que significa? So let's reframe fluency. So you want it 100%. You want fluency, but you understand that fluency doesn't mean being mistaken for an Italian. Look at me. I'm here talking to you in English. I consider myself fluent because I can sit down with anybody in any field and converse about that topic. If there are words that I don't know, I can still engage in the conversation. I have an accent. People understand me. I'm happy. This is what we want. We want you to be happy with your Italian. Don't be frustrated. So here's the next thing that I, uh, that I want to ask you. How much time, and here's something that I want to see in the comments. How much time are you willing to dedicate to learning Italian? Is that half an hour a day, an hour a day, more? Don't go crazy. Don't say five hours a day. I mean, I'll, if you could, if you can, then do it, but be realistic. But how much time are you willing to commit daily or weekly? And then over how long? I mean, do you have the unrealistic expectation of being fluent in three months? If you've been watching, if you watch videos of polyglots, they can inspire you or depress you. I don't watch any polyglots. I don't follow any polyglots because it can be depressing to see somebody who's a professional language learner and who has made a profession of that, which means they can work eight hours on a language. I suspect you have a job. Okay. So I can see one hour a day, a couple of hours a day, a uh, couple of hours a day. That's really good. Due ore al giorno. That's fantastic. Almeno un ore al giorno, Catherine. Yeah, that's fantastic. So don't let those videos, you know, I learned Italian in three months. For normal people, it's not possible. We have a life. So if you put that aside, how 30 minutes is okay, Elizabeth. 30 minutes is okay. There'll be days when it's 45 or, or 60 and days where you skip it. So it's fine, yeah. Um, for me is, yeah, 35, 40 minutes, perfect. We'll talk about immersion later. Um, how long are you willing to dedicate to this journey? Now, of course, a language is never ending, just like your own native language, like in English, how many words are you learning every, like not every day, but you know, there are words that you haven't heard before. And, and so how long do you think you got in you to say, I can, I can put in two years of my life. And then once I know Italian to a level that I'm comfortable, then life is good because you're not learning anymore. I mean, you're always learning, but you're not actively doing too much. So give me an idea of how do you, how long do you think you can endure the pain of banging your head against this Italian monster? 
as long as it as much as it takes. Wow. Sherlock. Wow. Um, as long as necessary. I'm so happy that I have the right crowd here. I have the right people watching this. If you're not watching this live, come join this kind of mentality. Um, now, now, let me give you, I get asked two main questions from people who approach me and my company for the first time. Two questions. One is, what's my level? And we're not going to deal with that now. I'll do another stream on what's your level of Italian if you've been studying for a while. But the second big or the first biggest question is, how long is it going to take me? And let me tell you this. You might disagree, and especially it sounds contradictory to what I just said. But if you apply yourself and you have a good plan, good strategy, within six months of starting to a year, you, you can be a white belt of Italian. So you will be able to already feel comfortable and engage in conversations with panic and with things that you don't know. But a year should be plenty for you to, to, to know that you can face Italians. And um, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to, it might get loud with the air conditioner, but it's getting hot here. Fa caldo, eh? Fa caldo. Allora. Eccolo qua. So ho hopefully it's not too loud. The second thing, the, the other thing that I want to uh, tell you that's a general tip is have a schedule. Plan it. You know, if you don't plan it, it doesn't happen. Don't just say, I can do a half an hour a day. Say to yourself or write it down. Let your family know. Every day from 5 to 6 p.m., I'm studying Italian. Don't bother me because I have to do it. And you got to be good with yourself because if somebody invites you for a barbecue at 5 o'clock, you say, no. I'll be there at six because I'm doing Italian. And so make it like it's a real thing. Imagine the beauty of learning online is that you can learn whenever you want. But the danger of that is that you can postpone as much as you want. Whereas if you have to go to a class, then you pay for it. You're going to go. So I hope that kind of give you an, gives you an idea. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is find, I keep saying the second, the next thing. Find a limited number of resources to use as your guide. We live in an era where there's so much information. One, we don't know what is good information and what is not good information. But it's just like, even if it's good, it's so easy to get distracted. So find a couple of sources to learn the language that you trust. I hope Italy Medizi is one of them. But find something that works for you, that makes sense to you, also based on the next tips that I give you, but, um, but don't get distracted with all the things that are out there because it's so easy to think that you're studying and you're not have a plan, a couple of good resources, stick to them, give them six months to a year. Then you can start branching out and have distractions and have fun. Um, non è facile. I have been trying to learn for eight months. That's fine. Eight months is great. I'm sure that you, you have enough to, to reach that point where within a year you are good. Doesn't mean fluent. I don't mean that you're going to be fluent in a year. That's not happening. Now, let me move on to, um, oh, yes. The first real thing that I want you to do is this. And it would be easier if you could see the slides. It's hear Italian. You must hear the language that you're trying to learn. The biggest mistake that any program has with, like, you know, if you, if you enroll at a, at a college course, most of the time is spent, obviously, teaching the thing and maybe practicing with other students, which is never really a good idea. But, um, but as a learner, you have to know, you have to self-discipline yourself. Self-discipline yourself. You have to discipline yourself. And because... Um, when you think about hear, why, why am I saying hearing Italian, not listening to Italian? Well, your brain needs to think that Italian is a relevant thing. If you only spend one or two hours a week because you have a private tutor and you only see that person two hours a week, let's say, that's a 
positive and expensive idea. But if um, if all if all your brain does is go to a class for two hours a week, and during that class, since you're learning, probably you're not going to you're not really hearing Italian because of what I'm telling you later. But yeah, you're not going to hear a lot of Italian. It's up to you to really expose your brain to the sounds of the Italian language. Now, on our academy, Italy Media Academy, there's a forum post that is super popular where there's a one hour lecture where I talk about immersion and how to do immersion. But let me be clear. I want you to do this from day one. Hear Italian. You're not trying to understand what it's going on because you don't understand it. Even after six months, you're not going to understand much. Even after a year, you may not understand much of a movie or a TV show. You want to hear it. Now, I'm going to give you an analogy. Uh, in language learning, there is usually an analogy that doesn't serve you and makes you really depressed, which is, well, children learn languages best. So as an adult learner, you're never going to learn it because you're too old. Now, that analogy is actually wrong because the only thing that infants have an advantage over us is they are forming their brain and physiology and hearing the parents' language, the native language, mother tongue, whatever you want to call it. Um, yes, it's true that children will have impeccable accent, as in they will sound native. As a grown-up learning a new language, you may never sound native, and who cares? <laughs> but that is the only advantage that infants or children have over us. That analogy doesn't make sense. It doesn't serve you right, because just to flip it for you for in a second, if, in case you haven't heard me be so passionate about this, but... As an adult, you're smart, much smarter than a child. You know how to interact with people. You know how social cues work. You know how the world works. So you're not learning that the object is a microphone that I'm looking at, and the word is microphone or microfono. A child is to do, has to do everything. So you are in a much better position than a child. But let me talk about this analogy that I think is going to make sense to bring this point home. A newborn doesn't speak for a year or two. And what are they doing for a year or two? They're just hearing the mother tongue. Their brain is just hearing it. That is what I want you to do. You're not trying to understand. Over time, you will get something, especially if you're studying at the same time. But it's um, that's the thing that it's most more, passionate more about. So when you say that you have half an hour a day or an hour a day or two hours a day, to that, I want you to add as many hours of hearing Italian. When you're driving, when you're cooking, when you're shopping, or like, whenever you're alone in bed, like, hear Italian. Have movies in the background. You're not trying to understand. If you, if you try to understand, you'll hate it. You'll hate the exercise. So, are we good with hearing Italian? So, let me ask you a question and let me bring up the chat. So, how many hours? Besides studying, do you actually hear Italian? This is going to be not a very good answer for most of you because we all think that we don't have the time, but we do. We do have the time to hear the language. Our kids don't care if we're watching. And I just saw a good reminder of the best tip I've ever given to my students was watch QVC Italia on YouTube. It streams, streams 24 seven on YouTube. And it's just infomercials in Italian. You see what they're showing you, that nobody speaks the dialect. It's the safest, cleanest way of hearing Italian. Un'ora, un'ora e mezza. I know, that's, it sounds like dieci ore. That's fantastic, because if you could put in six hours, at least, of hearing Italian, I know, don't hate me, but I'm, let me remind you, what the topic of this lesson is. Sorry, yeah, I just was it. It's how to learn Italian fast. If you cannot do it this way, that's fine. But it is about how to learn it as fast as possible. And that is how. You want to be like the toddler. You want to hear Italian so that your brain thinks it's, re it's relevant. You get used to the sounds of the language. And you're actually learning because if you're watching any of my videos in Italian and you hear me say, Allora, allora, allora. I say allora all the time. We, we all do. Like, then you learn how to use allora. So one word at a time, you'll get better. One phrase at a time, you, you're also learning. But this exercise is mostly for you 
to tell your brain, I care about this thing. Our brains are designed to ignore most stimuli. Otherwise, we'd go crazy if we paid attention to everything. So our brain, our brain will ignore most things. And if you only dedicate an hour every other day to hearing it out, then that's not enough for your brain to think it's relevant. So QVC Italia here. Uh, what other things can you watch? Let me tell you what you shouldn't watch. Don't watch comedy. Comedy is hard for a number of reasons. Comedy is usually based on play on words. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't matter because you're not trying to understand. But the problem with comedy is that most comedy is based on dialects and caricatures. You know, Roberto Benigni, he's not a real human. He's a caricature of somebody from Florence or from Tuscany. And it's exaggerated. And so most comedy is based on dialects and stereotypes more than real Italian. And so you want to avoid comedy if you can. Um, something that, if you're really wanting to do immersion seriously, something that you could do is pick one movie that you can stomach for a month and watch it every day. Or have it, don't watch it, like play it every day on loop. And sometimes you sit down and watch it. If you don't want to pick an Italian movie because, you know, culturally we've, we're different, you know, our movies may not be your thing. And yes, you want to learn about the Italian culture, but you know, you want to find something that you're not going to hate after three days. So it's okay if you pick an American movie, your favorite movie, and then just switch to the Italian dubbing. You know, dubbing is not the same as natural speech, but it's good enough for our purposes because you just want to hear it. So good. Are we good? So I'm seeing a lot of um, tips. Thank you for sharing. Grazie mille a tutti. Such a beautiful community. You're all sharing your tips and I, I will go through them after, the, after this. Uh, Christian, totally unrelated to this, but like, I, I will answer because I saw it. Can you explain the word nulla? Nulla is a synonym of niente. It means nothing. As in the, the, the word nothing. <laughs> nulla, niente, like nada. Spanish. Okay, so I want you to hear Italian more than you are, please. More than you are. If you can spend one hour studying, spend at least three, ho three hours hearing Italian. That is magic. You do this for six months, you will be shocked at how good your pronunciation is. So you want to focus on hearing Italian and get your pronunciation right, or as right as you can from the beginning. Um, especially Italians, we're not really used to foreigners speaking our language. And so we're not very flexible. You gotta speak it properly. And it doesn't mean you have to sound Italian, but you have to speak in a way that Italians will understand you. And so focus on pronunciation. There's no point being a master at grammar and vocabulary if when you speak, we go, uh, 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 okay, okay, scusa, okay. Here's the thing. If you do point number two, like if you hear Italian a lot, you are not going to make the mistake that I hear so much. And let me show my, you think, okay, I'm, a, I'm a pretty Zen guy, if you know me, but there's something that is frustrating. Interacting with people who are students who've, who uh, studied Italian for a long time, a year or two, they may even graduated with Italian. And they're still saying grazi instead of grazie for thank you. That means that you're not hearing Italian. So if you're a beginner, just do number one for a long time. Just don't even study, just hear Italian for a long time. Your brain will pick up the sounds. You can study pronunciation actively. I have a course for that, but it's, you want to sound as right as possible. So if you have been studying Italian for, or if you've been going to Italy for 20 years and you're still saying grazi, that is bad because that means you're not hearing it. You can, like I said, you don't have to sound native in anything. I am not an endorser of sounding native. Uh, I can tell you about the advantages of having an accent, by the way, if you want to know, let me know. Um, but grazie. That is the most basic word. And so if you can't pronounce that word right. Now, of course, if you say 
I don't even know if we would always understand you if you said grazi, depending on the context, but you know, if you say at the right time, then I guess I will understand, but you want to sound as good as possible. And focusing on pronunciation is fairly easy for Italian because it's consistent. You don't have to memorize the pronunciation of anything. You just look at a word and you say it, so you're good. But get the sounds right. Tricky sounds, apart from the R, which you worry too much about, but uh, the Z, it's usually a problem. S is a, is a problem. Uh, the G sometimes is a problem. The vowels, obviously, uh, that's usually a problem for English speakers. So uh, spend time on the pronunciation. Now, um, Mary, let me... Some people do not have an ear for languages. Can I disagree with you? Can I disagree with you and I'll tell you why? Are you fluent in your language? Do you sound good in your native language? Everybody can develop that. Anybody can apply what they do in their native language. And it's a skill that we actually all have. It's the method that we don't have. We don't have the right method. We may not have the right information on how to do it. And we may not have the right dedication. I'll give you an example. I've always considered myself not musical. First of all, am I really not musical? Have I not listened to music all my life? So what does it mean that I'm not musical? I, I don't have any, like I'm not musical. You know, I've just started teaching myself the drums and I thought it was going to be the most impossible thing in the world. I'm terrible, but it's actually the more time you spend and the more you trust that you can be musical or have an ear for languages, the more you do, the more you do. And um, so I'm sorry for contradicting you, but I know we, it's so easy to think that we are not gifted for languages. Now, of course, why are, I don't know if you're an English speaker, but why are English speakers not as gifted as Europeans? It's just because you're not exposed to other languages or in most cases, you don't, may not have an interest. So, uh, Europeans, we must be more exposed to languages, you know, Africans, like we are exposed to languages. And so we hear them a lot and we have a bigger interest. And, you know, every, if you travel, then you're going to, you're going to have to need some kind of other language, you know, in Europe is so, so many countries. And so it doesn't mean that as an English speaker, you're not capable or you don't have an ear for, for languages. It just means that you're not exposed to them and you don't have the right method probably. So please come to me, come to me, Mary, was it? Come to me and we'll make it happen for you. Italy made easy. Uh, now, what else did I have about pronunciation? Yeah, just that, just that. I, I'm, I'm bringing home some points that I don't have that many more and then uh, I'll open up to your questions, but I really want to help anybody get there quickly. We don't want to, waste our time or delay unnecessarily. You know, the 80, 20 principle, you know, do the 20% that gets you the most results. That's all we're trying to do. Most methods have the opposite approach. They do the 80% that doesn't get you a lot of results. You know, in terms of, um, Anna, that's the next point. I'll keep that to myself. So what's the next point? grammar. This one is a controversial one because I'm the first to say that most methods are flawed. Most academic method, methods are, they don't work because they focus on grammar. It's all about grammar. I have students who come to me after five years of Italian and all they've done is drill, 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 drill. Uh, and you know, like fill in the blanks and they are maybe even excellent at that, but then they can't speak. To me, that's your age is away from fluency. I would rather somebody who's in, in six months can communicate. And I, I doesn't really understand why, what they're saying. And like, they, they don't understand why they're saying it. Just, they're just saying it. Between the two, I would choose the six month learner to consider more fluent. And that's frustrating for somebody who spent so much time with grammar. So what do I mean grammar? I want you to master the Italian grammar. What? Uh, you just said it's not, I didn't say it's not important. I said that is not your focus. You're not trying to become a 
grammarian is that a word like a <laughs> you know you're not trying to um you're not trying to become a linguist you're trying to learn a language so you can speak to italians and communicate and so the focus is not grammar but as adults most of us we need to have as much things that give us confidence to face the monster that is speaking to foreigners like in a foreign language and so when you when you're good with grammar like when when you're so confident you are not stressing about that you know word structure to for a sentence you know that you're gonna get your articles your verbs right your adjectives you you know so get as much be good at grammar spend time in our courses in from zero to italian on the uh, on the academy we do a lot of grammar and we do it really at a level that no other program not even academic because i was an academic for 10 years we do grammar really good well uh because i want my students to feel confident then nobody cares if you get it wrong that is why in my level one italian beginner italian there's only one three star review all, all like there are five there's one three star and says great course not enough exercises that is coming from somebody who's used to the traditional approach i gotta do the exercises i gotta do fill in the blanks um did i miss the third point no third point was pronunciation sorry slides yeah, third point was pronunciation. Um, so, get good at grammar. Feel confident that you know how, you know what it is. Doesn't mean you're going to apply. Doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. That's why I don't want you to go crazy like exercise and judge yourself like they do in schools and acad you know, academic context. It's not about that. It's about having the confidence. So get good at grammar and how do you get good at grammar well if you know me you know what i am a huge huge proponent of lots of science behind this but also very controversial because commercially the opposite has been chosen and that is learn the grammar in your native language or the you know if you can find grammar taught in hungarian italian grammar then learn it in english if your english is good obviously but um so learn the grammar in your language. It's about speed and efficiency. You are going to understand all of it. You're going to understand the nuances. My grammar lessons at uh, it, uh, from Zero to Italian program, they're kind of like 20 to 40 minute grammar lessons, mostly in English with examples in Italian, because you don't want to confuse point two, here Italian, with Point four, learn grammar. Learning Italian grammar, or any language, in the language that you're trying to learn, like learning Italian grammar in Italian, it's, that it, it's so wasteful of your resources, it's wasteful of your time, because you're trying to understand what the grammar is, the points that they're making, but you're also fighting to understand what they're saying, because they're saying it in Italian. So if you want, if you want to really, really, really learn Italian, and get the grammar out of the way and do it in your native language. Learn the grammar in your native language. Now, here's an analogy that, going back to music, if you wanted to learn a musical instrument from me, worst person to teach, but uh, if you came to me to learn an instrument and from the moment you walk in, instead of saying, oh, hello, nice to meet you, I went, whatever instrument, you know, bam, 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 bam. And then you say, uh, how do, how does, can you teach me how to, whatever. And then I go, blah, blah, blah. I don't speak a word of your language. I only use the language that I'm teaching you, which is music. Now, over time, yes, you hear music over time. You might even pick up how to do it. But how long will that take you? Imagine if I told you in English, oh, if you want to do this, you know, we have chords. A chord is the three notes put together, and that's how you do it. That's the logic behind chords. Blah, blah, blah. Now you know chords. Now you're good. So trust me on this if you want to succeed as quickly as possible. So, but Manu, so what does it mean? Like, if, if I study in English, where does the Italian come from? The Italian comes from your effort to find the right resources. You're going to watch or listen to 
things in Italian that are interesting for you. I mean, grammar can be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm a grammar nerd. Like, I like it. But I'm not going to learn Japanese in Japanese and hope that I understand the grammar. I'm going to... I'll, I'll study the grammar in English or in Italian. And then I'll watch a lot of Japanese stuff. Um, so don't get fooled by the trend that you should be learning a language in the language. But as this method works only if then you give me your immersion. You give me your three to six to eight hours a day of hearing the language. And at some point, when you know more grammar, when you know more vocabulary, you will take those eight hours of hearing and you will take half an hour of that or an hour of that with active listening where you're trying to understand. And pick the right material, pick the right resources. And it's going to be easy. We do our best to create engaging, fun, entertaining, entertaining stuff that is in Italian, but doesn't really teach anything. I mean, you're learning, but you're not teaching. So, you know, like, yeah, you're not, you're not, you're learning, but I'm not, you're not being taught. Okay. And you're just listening to something that it's in Italian. You know, there's no dialects, which is a pretty difficult thing for you to detect if there are dialects or not in that video. Uh, it's spoken at a slower pace. We add subtitles, so, you know, so find the right material, you know, come to us and ask us, Apart from your content, because we have a lot of content in Italian that's created for these purposes, uh, but you know, get advice from us. Finally, finally, let's talk about speaking. So, actually, no. Let me ask you a question: How many of you who have attended a, a formal course? Or whatever you know whatever capacity college in person library online how many of you were taught in italian and how many of you were lucky enough to be taught the grammar in english now obviously careful like i said you must then add your italian exposure otherwise yeah you, otherwise you're just learning english basically like, you know you don't want that uh, so i see nope nope i don't know I remember uh, back at university, we had a policy that we would teach in, um, in Italian and so many people quit. You know, day one, students came in and we just attacked them with Italian and we had to explain how to do things in, in Italian, in Italian. And um, yeah, very, very hard. And sadly, graduates of three years, they still weren't as good as some of our students at, at the academy after six months. And um, yeah, hopefully you, you do both. You learn the grammar in, in English, your native language, and you spend a lot of time hearing Italian. That's, in, that's essential. If I have to say, what's the, the, down, like, what's the biggest mistake that learners of a language w that we make? Out of all the ones that I've talk, spoken about so far, the uh, pronunciation, the hearing Italian, the grammar uh, and the speaking. The biggest downfall, the things that we don't do enough of that makes us not be as good is the hearing Italian or hearing the language that we're learning. That is the thing that we don't do enough of. So please, if you want to succeed in Italian and if in a year time, in a year's time, you want to be able to call yourself basically fluent, do this. Now, speaking, let's uh, Maria, how do I study with me? So we have an academy. You can find it right now. You can still find it at academy.italmedizzi.com. And we have a number of courses. The main program is called From Zero to Italian, and it's made up of eight courses, eight levels. We're not producing the fifth course, the intermediate three. So, and ideally you start from the first one because the foundation that we lay is so solid. And we, we fix all the things that other courses haven't, have caused you to do wrong, basically, if you've studied Italian before. So ideally, um, now speaking, here's another controversial point. And, and with this one, I'm willing to compromise because if you go back to the analogy with the infant, they don't speak for a year or two. All they're doing is hearing. And then when they start speaking, they speak all right. Now, of course, as a child, they, they don't know life, they don't know anything. So 
they're not as good. They're not as good as us. So if we did it, but the the problem that we have with learning a language is that ideally in an ideal world where we're so driven and committed um, in an ideal world, we do not speak the language for the first year. What? Yes. So what I'm asking, what I'm saying that we should be doing, but then I tell you that it's very hard to do is if we could focus on the first three or four points. So you are, you know, or four points, so, you know, you're driven, you want it. You gotta be solid about that. But then you, you hear Italian a lot, like eight hours a day. You're just hearing Italian. You do an hour of active listening. You still don't understand anything because you're just listening, but you're paying attention. And you know, the, the rest of the time you just hear it. You work on pronunciation and you master the grammar and the vocabulary, obviously, and don't try and speak it. Why am I saying that this is ideal? It's because as a learner, we're not good, obviously, as a beginner. So when we start speaking very early, we are going to pick up very bad habits because we haven't heard enough Italian to sound good. We haven't heard enough Italian to know what sentence is grammatically correct because you know you don't need to even study grammar to know how to say che ore sono, what's the time? Che ore sono is an example of how odd it is. Che means what, okay? Ore means hours and sono means they are. So you don't even have to study Italian, but if you hear che ore sono enough, you know. And so the problem of speaking too soon is that we pick up very bad habits, very bad habits. And they might be hard to correct. Like that grazi comes because you started speaking Italian from the beginning. Now, why am I saying it's not practical and even one of my most popular courses, my traveler's course, it's called Speak Italian from Day One. So what, what am I preaching? The reason I, I think it's not too much of a realistic approach to not speak for a year is that we would give up a lot sooner. We want some kind of feedback that we are progressing. And if we are not speaking to anybody, it might be hard to stick you know, with this uh, idea of, of learning Italian. And so that's a, that's a tough one. So if you do have to speak because you know that if you don't speak, then you feel like you're not progressing, but you would be, but I understand it's hard. If you're not speaking, I mean, if you want to speak, what do you do? Who do you speak to? Most in-person programs have students speak with other students. The problem is that you got two people who don't know anything. <laughs> they know the basic, very bad pronunciation, and they are doing, you know, uh, simulations and made up dialogues with each other. That's not very useful. <laughs> uh, you can speak to yourself. Now we are better at, at judging, knowing if something is right or wrong when we do it to ourselves. But like it's still it's good and it's useful. But so who do you speak to? Ideally, you speak to Italians. And it's a little hard when you don't know enough because it's scary. They may not have the patience to be there and converse with you. And yeah, it's just very anxiety producing. And so, for example, what we have done on our academy, we have, and I, I've read some comments about uh, Cristiana and Giada and Michela. These are like our three chatters. We have native Italian speakers who are available for video calls. And they're short because you don't want to be booking an, like a one hour conversation in Italian. What are you going to talk about? Like it's, it's hard. Some people can't talk for an hour with a stranger in that language. So, so we keep our chats short. And, um, and then what we do is we just do conversation. So we, we help our students break the ice. It's a safe environment. Nobody's listening. It's somebody that you are basically paying to, to converse with you. No corrections, no judgment. This has really helped students. Now, I'm, I'm going to say as much as it's the one part in my business that I don't do myself, that is what is helping students the most. Students who take my courses, they get really good. But without that component of chatting to my team and, you know, break the ice so that when they have a real, like my team are Italian, but, you know, as soon as they're facing an Italian in a real situation, they have already learned how to 
break that ice and they do a much better job so what else did i have for speaking that's it i think um that's all i had really to say to you so now if there are any questions on any of these topics which was the basic one like how committed are you how much time do you want well we talked about that uh if you want if you have any comments like man i'm doing this do you think it's gonna help remember my goal for you is to get to a point where you're good you like you know what i'm okay with italian i know i don't know everything i know i make mistakes sometimes people don't but i'm good i want you to get to that i'm good point as soon as possible then you have a lifetime to perfect then you have a lifetime to learn all the proverbs all the sayings i see a lot of channels on youtube focusing on proverbs and it's like you gotta be super fluent before you even care about fancy like you know cool ways of saying something first get it good get, say it good it's like say it proper and then you fix it um does listening to italian songs count as listening i'm going that's a great question um rene i'm going to say no a lot of people want me to say yes and i get asked a lot but while listening to italian music is part of the culture you're learning italian culture you are hearing italian for sure but music doesn't the flow of mu of song is not speech because we're trying to fit in the metrics and we're also trying to um we're also rhyming we are breaking words in a different way so that it fits in the so i would say no still do it obviously but it's beautiful to to listen to italian music as well, especially if, if you like more melodic music that you can actually hear you know i found the other day i found this heavy metal band in italian i thought that's cool you don't usually find heavy metal in italian could understand the word <laughs> so you know um my wife needs to get to a b1 level would starting with your italian be a good foundation it is the best foundation i honestly i'm a humble person but we have done at Italy Media, we've done an amazing job at creating the most effective program whatsoever like, in the world i only i can say that because if you're an english speaker and you understand the points that i've just made it will get you now of course let's say you take your wife takes beginner italian level one it will take her four or five months to complete and that's a big course at the end of that she still doesn't know a lot of things so she wouldn't be able to pass an exam uh like for an italian level b1 because she doesn't know a lot of grammar that they would want her to know but i tell you that after that course she will be able to speak italian to us we should be able to speak to my grandma and she'll be basic yes she will not uh, she won't know a lot of all the words she will not know all the grammar but she will be able to converse after one course so best foundation for sure adriano celentano i i love adriano celentano and his music is actually easy to understand he's got a good pronunciation um let's see Uh, mia figlia in italy uh speak and visit often can you give examples please i'm sorry i uh, it's moving too fast i'm sorry uh yeah that's the problem with comments especially when you have a lot of people 145 right now uh, plus facebook so it's really hard to now i've seen some um tips on rai super quark documentaries documentaries are as good as uh, QVC, but they're more interesting. Documentary, you can see what they're describing. No dialects, ever, you know, the speakers have the best voices in the world, they're amazing actors. So yes, documentaries for sure. Super Quark, Super Quark is basically a documentary, like it's a live documentary. Dia uh, Diana, grazie per i punti importanti, grazie a te. Netflix, I think Netflix is a great resource for your immersion. You can watch stuff in Italian, that is produced like in italy for italians and that's cool but like i said it's totally okay to watch your favorite series especially if you already watched it like if you watch i have no idea for series but if there's a series that you enjoy watch it again in italian kirk will age be an issue of 67 anni love this question kirk and no 
age is not an issue and I'll tell you why I'll stop stop the comments please <laughs> I'll tell you why age is not an issue now of course as we age yes we may have a harder time remembering things but in my method since I have not very good memory I don't teach expecting anybody to memorize anything I don't give any phrases in my courses I don't say this is the phrase no I teach you how to make up the phrase so that at any time you need to say something you can build a sentence in Italian so I'll give you the skills I'll give you the bricks and then you build whatever you want so I don't do memorization because it's difficult for me and I think it's it gets more difficult as you age the advantage that you have mostly and you know it's ge generic but most of my most successful students are over 60. we have students in their 80s killing it and what's the advantage of older age usually two you have more time you have more time you know your kids are out of the way you know you got more time so it's that's the plus secondly the older generations know grammar so if you know english grammar well and you start learning a very similar language like italian because you know our grammar is very similar then you have a huge advantage over 20 something youngster who has no idea what a pronoun is or you know like doesn't an analyze you know somebody who makes a mistake like the famous english mistake your you apostrophe r e or your as a, if you make that mistake that means that you're not analyzing your own language how can you be good or it's going to be harder to be good in another language so if you're one of those people who say it's your like it's spelled like that's good so if you know english grammar and older people know better grammar like that's a fact so i wouldn't say age is that much of a problem you pay yes more patience gatto nero yes i think with age comes more patience more wisdom like I, i'm 45 soon and i I've, I've never been this zen about stuff i don't stress like yeah whatever uh it actually really helps I, I think being a beginner at anything at any time like all the time is a great thing being a beginner with drumming and actually some of my students will be happy to know that I've started jiu-jitsu as well it sucks being a beginner it sucks it's humiliating it's embarrassing but it builds you it builds that thing that you need to then succeed at anything in life and so uh plus for you know uh, aging for the aging population learning a language has been proven to help uh, prevent uh, alzheimer and dementia so it's really it's a good exercise anyway so it's been an honor to be here with you so many of you and francis i am so encouraged by everything that you are telling us okay i don't know if you can see but i get teary when i when i interact with you it's it takes time to do live streams and it's a lot of work and a lot of pressure but i think when 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 you say stuff like that it does make me cry so i know that you can do it let me leave you with this i know you can do it i've seen it happen with hundreds thousands of students that i've taught digitally i'm not even talking to them and they're killing it at 80 years old as well so you can do it just have the right method i hope this one hour long thing has helped you get an idea of what method could work for you if you want a more guided system like with me teaching you go to italy made easy academy find beginner italian level one if you're a beginner if you're at a higher level you can start at a later later course but we have to talk about levels at a different time i gotta go now <laughs> devo andare devo andare è stato un piacere un onore parlare con voi, giocare con voi, vi voglio mondo di bene, spero che tutti stiate bene, I hope everybody is doing well, tough times this year, 2020, forget about it, but more time for us to study, more time to start new passions and discover that we are good and that we are actually more gifted than we, than we think, because I know you are more gifted than you think, I hope I help you get an idea of the advantages that you have being older. Just in general, being not an infant. Ok, grazie mille. Eh, devo fare questo. Quindi questo è tutto. Siamo in Toscana. E ci vediamo presto, presto, presto. Ricordatevi, Caffè Italiano con Manu, first Thursday of every month. That's live, 100% in Italian, and it's fun. 
Ciao, buona giornata, buonanotte.